In Europe, still clearly on Spain, over the weekend, Eurozone finance ministers agreed to lend Madrid up to 100 billion euros to shore up its ailing banking sector. That's brought relief to investors increasingly worried about the bloc's debt crisis. The euro um, is trading against the dollar right now like this, 126.33. We all have also seen the pop-up for the um, equity, or well, certainly for the um, open calls for the equity markets here in Europe, as well as gains for commodities as well. Now, let's get out to David Costa, who's Dean at Robert Kennedy College, who joins us now from Zurich. And um, although some people, David, are interpreting this rather positively, I know that you seem to have become much more pessimistic in recent times about the outlook for, for Europe. Why is this too little too late? Well, in a way, for the market, it is not too late because we had a very much an oversold situation. And actually, the market expected this pain situation to drag on for another couple of weeks. But it is too little too late in solving the European problem as a whole because we haven't really found a solution for growth, for unemployment. And those are the situations which are inevitably going to come back sooner or later. So for the time being, they're certainly very positive for the market, which is, in this case, more optimistic than I am. But on the long run, we are still having this band aid pack situation, a last minute uh, solution, and not really finding a global uh, policy, a common page where uh, this problem can be solved once for all. Um, what do you believe the global policy ought to be to bring growth? I mean, we just have to take the austerity for this, for this period, don't we, and work it through? Well, I think, uh, first of all, the European Central Bank should have a much, much bigger role in this situation and pretty much uh, put aside the fear of inflation for a moment and think that growth comes, in this case, as a much, much more important priority. For that, I think that more quantitative easing will be necessary or, as an alternative, something which has already been taken off the table time ago, is really a blanket guarantee for all the sovereigns in Europe. And that will really be a very strong signal to solve and probably might even cost much less than and all these uh, uh, last-minute bailouts or, or financial support situation because we have first of all a crisis of confidence and to restore confidence we need to know that there is a body really taking strong action and standing behind the problem at the moment. Uh, uh, David, if that is the case, uh, do you think investors should not be piling on risk as they are doing now here in the Asian session if you take a look at opening calls in Europe and also even U.S. futures in these early hours? Well, in a way, uh, the, the patchy band-aid uh, way of solving the European problem is pretty much uh, what we're going to get in the end. So realistically thinking, we're not going to get any of those uh, drastic, quick solutions like a euro bond or the ECB doing too much uh, in a short amount of time. So that's probably a very positive sign for the markets. And I think because markets are largely oversold, I still think there is space uh, for investors to enter the market at this point, particularly in more conservative sector, uh, staying a bit away from financials, we don't have much clarity, so not necessarily that is a bad thing for investors. Actually, it can be quite positive, but on the long run, I would expect more obstacle, more correction ahead, especially until we don't have a clarity from Greece, but also all the situation in Europe. Uh, what are you most critical about as far as this uh, up to 100 billion euro bank rescue plan for Spain is concerned? Is it the fact that the money ultimately gets contributed to Spain's deficit level? Is it that it ends up on Spanish bank balance sheets? Or is it that it's not really addressing the key problems of growth and even jobs in Spain? Yes, that's uh, pretty much the situation. We don't have any growth solution. We don't have also an improvement uh, of the situation of the financing of Spain, which is much more important. We have seen just the comments last week of the China Investment Corporation say that they are pretty much shying away and reducing all their exposure to Europe. So at the end of the day, the situation will not improve unless we see those yields going down, both for Spain and Italy, which are not uh, in a, like in the situation of Greece or much more economy, uh, uh, secondary importance for Europe. So that's the main problem which has not been tackled. Another critic I have is that first uh, Spain said that they will not go to require any type of aid well, just a few days ago and now these over the weekend. So again these uncertainties uh, might ease the situation in the market for the short term but for the long term we need much more stronger position to solve the situation of the financing of European governments once for all. Okay David thanks for that. David Costa from Roberts Kennedy College. So uh, let's look around